Hello APC Mechanics students in Unit 2 Newton's Laws of Motion Class 10 Resistive Forces Part 2 Then Section 1 Stopping Body and the Drag Force F is minus KV In the previous video we have discussed the dynamics and kinematics of a falling object under the influence of gravity and the drag force so we have two forces acting on the object Now we're interested in studying the motion of an object given initial velocity V0 and submitted to one and only force which is the drag force in this case the drag force decreases exponentially as the velocity decreases exponentially till becoming at rest we're interested today in the following notions determining the differential equations that differential equation that governs the variation of v the solution of the differential equation acceleration dimension analysis descriptive and analytical kinematics and we will solve some exercises at the end of the video then let's kick things off by starting with the differential equation of v differential equation of v differential equations are equations relating the variables and its derivatives its derivative such equations are obtained by big laws like newton's second law now consider an object of mass m moving along a level road given an initial velocity v0 and acted upon the drag force f is minus kv the forces acting on the object are the pull of gravity down, the normal push up, the drag force. So here I'm representing the drag force in the form of the magnitude. Here I'm representing the force itself. The minus sign represents that it opposes the motion. Now we can consider a different instance along which we will utilize the FVD because we know that in this case this is a variable force. Initially at t is equal to zero, we have an initial velocity. So let me first represent the pull of gravity and the normal push. In this case, we have an initial velocity because if you refer to the text, they're telling you consider an object of mass m moving along a level road given an initial velocity v0. We have initial velocity. Then initially we have a drag force unlike, unlike the previous video and it will be pointing toward the left. Now, in the transient state, as the objects start losing speed, speed will decrease, so we will expect that the drag force will decrease in magnitude. The pull of gravity and the normal push, so let me say that this is normal push, and this is normal push, they will remain unchanged. And finally, when the object stops, its velocity becomes zero, so the drag force is zero, then it's being only acted by the pull of gravity and the normal push. Now I will consider only a more general case which is given by the transient state and let me say that we're gonna apply Newton's second law given by F naught is MA we have the pull of gravity the normal push the drag force is equal to MA and now we're gonna consider the horizontal and the right is positive because the box is moving toward the right now in this case the pull of gravity and the normal push has zero projections whereas the force the drag force is given by a minus sign that would be minus kv is ma now here you notice that we have two unknowns so we need another equation and this cannot be done because along the vertical that what won't help us we have the pull of gravity balanced by the normal push therefore we need to transform this equation into a different differential one we have two variables v and a and no other equation can be implemented for a simultaneous solution the way to proceed is to convert the equation into a differential one. Okay. So the way to proceed is to convert, yes, as we said, into a differential one. We realize that V and A are related by, or via calculus by A is dV by dt. Then we have minus K, V is M dV by dt. Why we have transformed A to be expressed as dv by dt because remember that we are interested in finding the differential equation that governs the variation of v and not a and if we rearrange the equation that would be that and remember that the derivative must be represented in its canonical form which means its coefficient must be or it should be one then let's divide by the mass and that would be the differential equation first order in v now the solution of the differential equation the differential equation that governs the variation of v is given by 
sorry the differential equation is given by and its solution is given by v0 e minus k over m multiplied by t which is an exponential decay where v0 is the initial velocity so remember that we know that what does it, what does v0 represent if you refer to the previous text v0 is the initial velocity m is the mass of the object k is the coefficient of the drag force however this is the solution we need to make sure that it reflects the physics of the problem in other sense we need to make sure that this is the correct solution this can be tested and verified by testing limiting values limiting cases the object is given initially v0 initially velocity v0 which means that if we replace here time by zero that would give us v0 then let's test it together now v at t is equal to zero that would be replacing time by zero e to the power zero is one and that indeed gives us v0 which is verified now the object reaches a stopping point let's verify this from the solution the final velocity is attained after infinite relative amount of time given by t is infinity v at t is infinity so that would be v0 e to the power minus infinity and that since k over m is positive positive multiplied by infinity that would be infinity minus infinity so e power minus infinity eventually zero which verifies the fact that at the end of the trip the block will reaches uh, will reach a stopping point making its velocity to be zero now the solution can be determined from the differential equation that is given by dv by dt plus k over mv is equal to zero using a method called separation of variables so remember that here i have represented the solution and you can ask the following question how can we determine the solution without proposing it or or verifying it by testing the limiting values this could not be done easily for the falling body since the other member of the differential equation is mg and not zero. So in analogy with the previous video, we haven't done the solution using the separation of variables because it's a bit challenging. We can do it, but it's not an easy task. So for this reason, we're going to do it here in this case in order to master the concept and later throughout the past papers we will see how to solve the differential equation having a member given by mg and not zero then let's solve together the differential equation dv by dt plus k over m v is equal to zero the way to do it is to drag this to the other side and this method is known as the separation of variables which means that upon this equal sign what is on the left should represent the same variable and what is on the right should represent the same variable here we have two variables given by v represented in a circle and given by box t represented by a box so i will move v down and dt will be moved up so we have dv divided by v is minus k over m d multiplied by dt now we can integrate on both sides now what is the integral of 1 over v with respect to v that would be lin v and what is the integral of a constant as a linear term plus a constant however we're interested in v not the lin of v and this okay let me say that c is the constant of integration now we're interested in v not in lin v and we can get rid of lin v by taking the exponential of both sides remember the identity that we have introduced in unit one given by e lin of x is basically x and lin of e power x is given by x so now we're gonna take the exponential of both sides so we will say that e lin v is given by e minus k over mt plus c all right then here you know that e of a plus b is given by e of a multiplied by e of b so that would give us this now here because c is a constant which makes e power c a constant itself so we can rename this to be the constant c then the expression of the velocity is given by a constant multiplied by the exponential factor which is a decaying factor but in order to complete the solution we need to find what does c represent 
and this can be done by referring to initial conditions we know that initially the speed is given by v0 replacing t by 0 that would give us e to the power 0 which is 1 which is c which means v0 is given by c okay so here what i'm doing is that let's replace t by 0 that would be v0 which is c multiplied by e to the power 0 which means that the constant c is equal to v0 and we replace it back here then the solution indeed is given by that now what about the acceleration this is an easy task why because now we have the explicit expression of the velocity and the acceleration can be determined via calculus v0 is a constant it can be dragged out and the derivative of e power u is given by u prime eu now what's the inner derivative of this linear term is a constant given by minus k over m and that would be the acceleration then the expression of the acceleration is given by that and it can be expressed as so i'm writing a again now here i just factored out k minus k over m notice that this is nothing but the velocity so a is minus k over mv which is basically if you compare so if you look at this equality carefully between a and this term so a is minus k over m v if you take m to the other side that is m a is minus k v so minus k v is basically m a and here you can notice that we have reached again the starting point given by the newton second law because remember that this have been obtained by utilizing the fvd in the transient state this is just a side remark so basically that would be the answer of the acceleration but we know that in some particular systems acceleration is related to the velocity whenever for example we have a drag force so you can consider this as an exercise now what are the limiting cases let's check them together initially the acceleration is only due to the drag force at a t is equal to zero replacing t by zero that would give us e to the power zero which is given by minus v zero multiplied by k divided by m so that would be the initial acceleration finally at the stopping point what's the acceleration at t tends to infinity that would be e to the power minus infinity and e power minus infinity zero so indeed at the stopping point the acceleration is zero and eventually the block will stop now dimensional analysis the only thing that we don't know its unit is given by k and in order to determine the unit of k we need to re we can refer to any equation and in particular we can refer to this one and we can ignore the minus sign so k would be given by f over v replacing them so f can be replaced by m a m is given by kilograms a is meter per second square and v is meter per second so basically this cancels with this this cancels with this so we're left with kilogram per second then the dimension of k is kilogram per second now descriptive and analytical mechanic uh, kinematics the velocity vt is given by the expression which is v0 e minus k over mt and its function as per time is given by that this is an exponential decaying function decreasing function starting from zero and reaching a value a zero value now here let me mention something that is very crucial upon looking to this curve you can notice the following based on if you try to plot tangents at different points you can notice that the slope is trying to rotate in the anti-clockwise manner so you can directly claim that the velocity is increasing however let me state the following so the velocity here is negative and the velocity is increasing so let me just give some values so here it would be given by three meters negative three meters per second negative two meters per second negative one meter per second or let me say negative half meters per second so indeed the velocity is increasing due to the negative sign but if you're talking about the magnitude which is the speed because we know that the block will be traveling and its speed would be decreasing to be more precise not the velocity the velocity is increasing because 
it's going from negative up to zero so we say the velocity is increasing however the speed is decreasing all right so yes this is a side remark about the vt graph now regarding the acceleration the expression of the acceleration is given by a of t minus k over mv0 e minus k over mt so what would be the graphical representation so remember that the acceleration at initial instant it started from a negative value and it's gonna reach up to zero the only way it's gonna reach that is by this exponential growth this is a negative exponentially growing function increasing although this is a decaying factor but it happens to be increasing due to the minus sign which is found here starting from a negative value given by minus k over mv0 and reaching a value a zero value all right Now exercise one, an object is released from rest at time t is equal to zero and falls through air, which exerts a resistive force such that the acceleration a of the object is given by a is g minus bv, where v is the object's speed and b is a constant. If limiting cases for large and small values of t are considered, which of the following is a possible expression for the speed of the object as an explicit function of time? So the only correct one would be a, because we know that for such dynamical systems, the expression of the velocity is given by a constant, let me say a box, multiplied by 1 minus e minus, in this case, bt. So the correct choice would be a. Now, another way to approach this problem is to do it in brute force. We need to check that a is the correct answer after the argumentation that we have done. So V is given by G over B multiplied by 1 minus E minus BT. Now let's find the acceleration. Acceleration would be given by DV by DT, which is D by DT of G over B minus G over B E minus BT. Now the derivative of this would be constant minus G over B, we drag it out d by dt of e minus bt now we multiply by the inner derivative which is minus b and that would give us minus g over b multiplied by minus b e minus bt these two will cancel and that would give us what g e minus bt so you know, we know that the acceleration is given by that now as a check let's try to replace this velocity in this equation and determine the expression of the acceleration and check that it agrees, agrees with this one. So that would be g minus b, the velocity is given again by g over b into 1 minus e minus bt. So b with b cancels, that would be g minus g into 1 minus e minus bt. If you expand here, that would be g minus g plus g e minus bt. They cancel and indeed g e minus bt so we have determined the acceleration using this formula and using v and then we have determined again the acceleration using calculus and we can notice that both answers are the same now exercise two which is an exit ticket for today's video a car is traveling along a straight line a straight level road when it runs out of gas at time t is equal to zero from this time on the net force on the car is a resistive force minus kv where v is the velocity and k is constant which of the following pairs of graphs best represent the speed v and position x of the car as function of time after t is equal to zero we know that the speed or the velocity will decrease exponentially so it's either gonna be d or b we will directly eliminate a c and e however the correct one is dy because although the car or the the car yes its velocity is decreasing but however it's still covering some position so the position will increase and eventually whenever it reaches a stopping point the position will remain unchanged because it will stop then the correct answer is d so b is wrong then that's it for me in this video guys, see you soon and a new one.